Hey, welcome to Rick's DIY. Today I'm going to do a uh, real quick uh, demonstration on how you can make a really cheap uh, homemade transfer switch. A single circuit transfer switch to uh, power your uh, furnace. Maybe a well pump. Uh, something that runs off of uh, 120 volts, uh, 15 amp circuit. This is my uh, auto uh, transfer switch that I make and sell. Uh, under the brand name Heezy. This is the HCS 15 Auto. You can find it on my website heezy.com or also on Amazon and uh, possibly eBay if I have any of my uh, uh, introductory ones I'm selling. But that's basically it. It's got a, uh, a breaker here. It's got an indicator light on this one. And this is the inlet plug where you powered in and it automatically switches over. There's no uh, switch needed on that. Now a traditional uh, single circuit transfer switch, this is just the, the cover plate here, um, and then it goes into a uh, conduit box. But uh, this one is the uh, manual switch that I uh, used to make and sell, but I'm transitioning kind of to this new box where it has these mounting flanges, and uh, everything's made in house, The uh, the, the everything's made in the USA, the box and everything. Where These ones I was buying conduit boxes that were made in China, and uh, I kind of wanted to switch everything out and make as much as I could in the U.S. So this has a stainless steel faceplate on it. That's what it looks like before anything's mounted. It's got the uh, cutout for the uh, for the breaker, the switch, and then the inlet plug. And like I said, here it is when it's uh, installed on there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, the uh, the switch here to uh, make ourselves a, uh, a really simple uh, transfer switch using a, uh, just a standard junction uh, like a light switch box. Now this is called a single gang. I mean, it's just the, the single width. You can also get a double gang one. It would be double this. But uh, this is really all you need. And I've already got a couple knockouts put on here and I've already put the, uh, the extension cord a uh, little adapter um, squeeze connector on here and so basically on this what you'll do is you'll have a cover in this case I'm using all metal you can get plastic if you want and this had a, a, a single hole in it and I had made it a little bit larger so you could put on this uh, double pull double throw switch and it's real important you get a double throw double pull and what that means is that we got a center pull which is our common, meaning it's always connected all the time. This is what's going out to what we're powering. Say this is powering our gas furnace. So this, the power coming off, the leg coming off here is always connected basically to what we're powering. And then on, on each side of this are six lay, or six poles here total, um, is we'd have like our incoming power from our line voltage and then our incoming power off our generator. Or backup power supply and so whatever position in the center position this one would be off when it was like this it will actually connect two of these pulls up and power up either a generator power or if we switch the other way to the uh, line power and that's basically all we're doing and you can use the round switch and basically you got it like that and uh, real basic wiring and then I'm using just a uh, a piece of an uh, extension cord that got damaged. And this is a 15 amp cord and it, you can read on the uh, plug a lot of times and it will tell you what it traded at or it will be on the, the cord itself if you're using an extension cord. Otherwise just buy a 15 amp rated uh, little plug appliance plug cord uh, from your hardware store and that will work too. And all we're going to do is put this in through here now it will be clamped down and then we'll have our switch on here and that will be like so and then in one position it will be connected to our line voltage power in our furnace we could shut off the furnace by putting it in the center position or we can have it down where it would be going power into the to the plug side and that would be uh, we'd power that off our uh, our uh, backup power supply or generator and so doing it this way it's just a real inexpensive way if you guys don't want to buy it, uh, you know, transfer switch and just trying to, maybe you're trying to make a couple of these for powering up a bunch of different things. It's 
So on this one, like I said, I got this this switch which would work just fine. This is rated for uh, for 15 amp, 250 volt AC. So we're running 125 volt AC. And uh, but what I'm going to do instead of running the round one on here because this has like a, a type of connector that you need like a spade connector on. And I actually don't have any of those small spades handy. And I, I really prefer these uh, these uh, larger switches I got with the double arrow on them. And these uh, just squeeze into a recess. The problem is it's a rectangular cutout. So I'm going to cut this out. And uh, how I'm going to do that is first I need to uh, mark it. I'm going to use one of my other ones as a template. But you can also just measure off of these if you have a, another switch. And then also in the uh, schematics that you can get from the manufacturer, it will tell you the cutout dimensions that uh, are recommended. So what i got here is I'm just going to, this little center hole I did wasn't really centered up before, so I'll try to do my best to center it. Now the other thing I can also do is, um, is put in a, a breaker. And it is recommended to put a breaker in, but a lot of times on your uh, generators, if you're using a generator power source, they have a built-in uh, breaker. So I'm not going to be putting a breaker on this one, but it would be a matter of just uh, basically putting in this round hole right here to pop in a breaker. And uh, it, I can show you how to wire that. But basically, I'm just going to try to center this up as best as I can. That looks pretty centered there. As good as it gets. I'm going to mark this with the pen here. We'll see how that looks. That looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. So I'm just going to use a little Dremel rotary cutoff tool to uh, cut this out with a little saw blade. Alright, so this is what I uh, got here, and it's just my uh, Dremel, and all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put this in the vise, and basically just come along here and cut all these out, and we'll be able to pop that in. So I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I got the uh, cut out there, and I'm just going to take the switch. And the uh, first thing I'll clean up some of the edges there with a file. And, uh, just, uh, See it from the inside there. I'm just gonna push that in, and now well, we got our switch in place. And the center is the off position on this one. This is a double pole, double throw, just like the other one I was talking about. And now we just gotta wire it. And it's pretty simple to wire. Like I said, our center pole. Coming off the center here, and um, this one it doesn't have a diagram. A lot of the switches will have a diagram on the side. Oh, that one doesn't either. Um, but there's some numbers. I don't know if you can see the numbers on the switch. There's a 1 and a 2, and then a 1A and 2A and 2B and 2A. That makes, am I doing it right? Anyways, um, so the, the center position. Like I said, is what's going to power our furnace. So we're going to want to connect directly to that. And that's going to be coming out the back side on this one. So I got the back hole opened up. And I got the top. And I got the, well I'm going to say the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this through. And I need to put a couple connectors on here. So I'm going to have to strip these. 
I got a uh, black, white, and green. Our green's going to be a ground. That's going to be connecting up to the ground coming off the uh, furnace. I'm going to use fully insulated female connectors. Generally like the bluish ones are rated for the 14 gauge, which is what this wire is. And then 14 gauge is good for 15 amps. So I got some crimpers. I've got two different types of crimpers. I have the uh, Klein ones and uh, if you see here it says non on the top and then insulated so the non is for a non insulated kind and this these are insulated so we'll be crimping these right in here like that we'll do the uh, white one first And tight, and you can see the connection. The good thing to always do is kind of pull on them, give them a good tug, see if you can pull them off. I'll make sure you got a good connection. I'll do my black here. I got my black nice and tight. Now, the, the ground I'm going to leave off because we're going to be using a wire nut on that. And so on these, I just need to connect to either side, uh, on the far sides. And so we're going to go off of this one where it has this little break right here in the plastic. So these two kind of look like they're on the same side. And these two are kind of off by themselves. So I'm going to use the ones that are kind of off by themselves, just for my own. And push those on. These are called stake-on terminals. A quarter inch. Kind of help you find what you're looking for. And there I got it uh, connected up. So like I said, the center one will do the same thing with wires going to our furnace. And then with the top ones, this will be our incoming power. And then like I said, we got the uh, our female plug coming off there. And this, there will be no way that this, our male plug, that this would ever uh, have power coming off of it. Because this... Uh, double pull uh, break before make so it breaks the poles in the center position off so so basically at this point we'd want to leave it like this we'd want to install it on our furnace or our other appliance screw it down uh, bring our bring our power that uh, would normally be coming through and going straight to the uh, furnace we're going to want to basically just split that in half and have it uh, connect on the top and then the two center pole again will go straight through the back and that would connect up to our uh, our furnace directly at the unit and then we'll just screw this down And then that one will be ready to go. That would be mounted right on the side of it. And uh, center position off. And you can put some labels on here if you want. So that way you kind of know what, what it's for. And then basically a normal position will always be in one position. And basically power coming from your circuit breaker. And then when you need to uh, power up from your generator plug. Basically just shut this off. Plug in your generator to here and switch it to that and you're off running your furnace off your generator. This has uh, been Rick's DIY. Appreciate you guys watching. If you got any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks again for watching.